Part 15 of Rebuilding a Large Old Twin Cylinder Steam Engine. This is assembling the valve gear. And the first thing that I'm doing is refacing the valves. And I do this by rubbing the valve on some wet or dry sandpaper, which must be placed on a perfectly flat surface and lubricated with a little machine oil. Once the valve has a good finish to the surface, it can then be fitted to the cylinder. And again, plenty of oil everywhere. I'm using steam oil for this. Whenever you refit any parts, always make sure there's plenty of oil between the moving parts. And do make sure that the brass drive block that is fitted to the valve is not a tight fit. I'm wrapping some graphited yarn around the valve spindle, and as you can also see, I've put a silicon o-ring in there too. That's because the hole in the actual steam chest is a little on the large side, and is a bit of a rattle fit on the valve spindle. By the time it's all together, held together by the gland, with the graphited yarn and the o-ring, it should be fine, there shouldn't be a leak there. If there is a leak, what I will have to do is sleeve the part of the valve chest where the valve spindle goes in, but I think it should be okay. And here you see me using a small screwdriver to push the valve packing into place. A word about valve packing in general. As you see here, I'm tightening up the gland nuts. The gland only needs to exert enough pressure on the valve spindle to seal it, and not any more. Never over tighten the gland on a steam engine, you will score the piston or valve rod. Here you see me screwing the valve spindle into the brass block that moves the valve up and down, and as I've said before, this brass block must not be tight in the valve, otherwise the valve can be held off the port face and will require quite a lot of pressure to slam it in place on the port face. The valve spindle is threaded to allow for adjustment, and I cannot fully adjust this at the moment until the valve gear is put in place, I'll be covering that in the next video. Now that the valve spindle is in its approximate position, I'm going to adjust the gland to just tighten the packing and see what it feels like. It needs to be a smooth slide, no binding, no griping anywhere. And once again, a little bit more steam oil, in anticipation of the first run. And the first run is not too far away now. Yes, that feels good, there's nothing wrong there at all. A nice fluid movement, and just enough friction to allow the valve spindle to not drop by its own weight. Over now to the valve gear. The valve gear is not very well made like most of the other parts of this engine, and it needs a good clean up. It needs a clean up with a needle file, followed by sandpaper and a needle file again. But sometimes I use this to speed the process up. This is called a flapper wheel and it consists of a load of pieces of sandpaper that spin round and clean up the part and you can get into the corners. The good thing about a flapper wheel is it doesn't remove too much material but it does remove the surface rust. Looking at this engine, which I've been doing a lot of that lately, I reckon that this engine sat under a bench for many years before somebody came along and decided to rebuild it, that's in inverted commas. These parts were just blathered in paint, cover a multitude of sins. Painting is easy, this takes a lot more effort. I'm not going to get this perfect though, not by a long way. But I will get it workmanlike, which should be fine for what the engine is. Some of the parts are deeply pitted with rust as well. Cleaning up these parts really does take some time. This is the reversing lever, and it's a very rusty old thing. Again, it was just painted grey in the first place, over the rust. Not the best thing to do. But with a bit of time and effort, the engine will resurrect itself with a bit of help from me. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.